morning and welcome to the planning hearing officers hearings for September 27, 2017. My name is Laura Stotler and I'll be serving today as the planning hearing officer. We have two cases and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. Uh, the agenda, staff reports, and recommendation for each of today's cases can be found on the city's website. Okay, I'm going to restart. Good morning and welcome to the Planning Hearing Officers Hearing for September 27, 2017. My name is Laura Stotler and I'm serving today as Planning Hearing Officer. We have two cases and the relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. The agenda, staff reports, and recommendation for each of today's cases can be found on the City's website. A copy of the hearing procedures are also available on the counter by the door next to the agendas as are copies of the staff reports. So today we have two different cases. One of them is a conditional use permit under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 of the Glendale Municipal Code. A conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. For applications, um, well that was, and I'll, we also have a variance. Um, for applications for a variance under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.43 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a variance shall be granted if four required findings are present. And those findings are outlined in the staff reports and they're also online. If the evidence presented in the applications and at the hearing meets the criteria, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the cases in question. If the findings of fact are not evidence, then the request will be denied. Notification of this public hearing was accomplished by the use of a public notices, which were mailed to property owners and occupants located within 500 feet of the subject property. The notices were also physically posted on the site in question, and notices were placed in the local newspaper and also posted on the city's website. So hearings will proceed as follows. I'll read a description of the requested entitlements. The case planner will then make an overview a presentation on the case, give an analysis, and make a recommendation. The applicant will then be asked to come forward, stating both name and address, and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and all interested parties will then be asked to come forward and speak, stating both name and address, and will have a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers, and they will have a five-minute time limit for the rebuttal. Uh, the hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicants and to all persons who have responded to the public notice, um, either by speaking here or who have submitted a written response and provided their mailing address. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. However, if a decision is made at this hearing, the decision will, date will be today's date and the 15-day appeal period, um, and these are calendar days, will start today. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures from the Permit Services Center located on the, the same floor of this building in Room 101. We also have speakers cards. These are the green cards. So if there's anyone who has not submitted one of these who would like to speak on one of the items on the agenda today, please submit one to our assistant. Um, I would also like to inform everyone that the official proceedings of the hearings are being recorded as part of the public record. Okay, so for our first case today, we have 452 and a half West Colorado Street. This is Glendale Spa. It's conditional use permit number PCUP 1712388. The applicant is Garo Nazarian, and I would like to ask staff to come forward and please provide a presentation. microphone oh maybe it's not working we will start again <laughs> sorry, that's okay. all right there we go okay um, this is an application for a conditional use permit case number PCUP 1712388 to allow the continued use of a massage massage establishment Glendale Spa located at four five two and a half West Colorado Street in the SFMU Commercial Residential Mixed-Use Zone. 
Um, <clears throat> originally developed in 1975, the project site currently features a 7,565 square foot multi-tenant commercial building. The massage establishment is located in the middle tenant space of the commercial building located at the front portion of the lot and is 662 square feet in size. Uh, the other tenants on the property include a psychic reading service, a graphic and print shop, and a vehicle repair establishment. The subject property is located mid-block on the south side of West Colorado Street between Pacific and Columbus. There are a total of two parking spaces existing on the project site. The surrounding development fe features a mix of commercial uses along West Colorado Street with multifamily uses located on the block to the south. Um, on January 25, 2016, the City Council adopted an ordinance requiring all existing and new massage establishments to obtain approval of a CUP and incorporated standards in both Title V and Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code relating to their operation. Subject massage establishment Glendale Spa is one of the existing establishments and has been in operation since 2015. Uh, the proposed use will be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan and is appropriately located in an area of the city zoned for commercial uses. The applicant's request to allow the continued operation of the massage use is not anticipated to be detrimental to the public health, safety, general welfare, or environment as conditioned. Adequate public and private facilities are provided for the site and are existing, and there's no expansion or changes being proposed to the existing site plan or building. The Glendale Police Department did not cite any major concerns related to the applicant's request. The Neighborhood Services Division did cite that there's currently an open code compliance case for this address, um, requiring the business owner to obtain approval of a CUP for the massage establishment and then obtain the required licenses as per Title V. A recommended condition of approval, as noted in the staff report, require, will require the business owner to obtain all necessary building permits and licenses in order to comply with this open case. Um, staff is recommending approval of the project with conditions, as noted in the staff report, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have no questions at this time. I'd like to call forward the applicant, Mr. Garo Nazarian. Good morning, Garo Nazarian with Domus Design 109 East Harvard Street, Suite 306 in Glendale 91205. The subject, uh, you know, the uh, this massage establishment, it's a, uh, uh, you know, the property, it's zone uh, SFMU, which is a mixed use uh, zone, which allows uh, commercial residential or only residential or commercial uh, standalone you know uh, businesses so this uh, uh, property it's as SFMU zone and the massage establishment is one of the permitted users in the zone that the proposed use will be consistent with the various elements and the objectives of the general plan the, the proposed use will be consistent with the various element of and objectives of the general plan for the area the land use element of the Glendale General Plan designation, the subject site is a commercial residential mixed use uh, area. Personal service and uh, personal service land use, such as a massage establishment, generally offer a complementary element to surrounding users. Massage establishments are not uh, are uh, are an allowed use in the SFMU. Mm -hmm. so, uh, subject to approval of the condition, uh, you know, conditional use permit. The subject site is a commercial area along Colorado Street uh, that is suitable for this uh, type of use. Continued operation of the massage establishment shall be required to, uh, to comply with the city noise ordinance and uh, as such will be consistent with the noise element. No other element of the general plan, including the open space and the uh, recreation and the housing uh, element will be impacted as a result of the massage establishment. Therefore, the proposed use is in keeping with the various elements and the objectives of the general plan. B, why will the proposed use in, uh, and its associated structure and facil facilities not uh, be detrimental to the public health, uh, safety, or general 
welfare or uh, um, to the environment. The proposed application requires a request for the con continu uh, continued operation of the massage establishment in the SFMU zone is not anticipated to be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or the environment. As conditioned, the massage establishment has been operating in this location since October of 2015. The facility is located in the first floor uh, of a multi-tenant commercial building on the south side of the Colorado Street. Including read and the, the immediate vicinity of the subject site along Colorado Street is developed with the variety of the commercial uses, including retail office and the pers personal services. Directly in the uh, south of the subject uh, property, it's a uh, multi residential uh, zone. And uh, so approval of this uh, application, it, will be, it won't be detrimental to the surrounding area or users. Why will the proposed use and facilities not adversely affect or conflict with the adjacent users or impede the normal development on the surrounding property? The use and the facility will not advers adversely affect or conflict with the adjacent users or immediate the normal development of the surrounding property. No changes are proposed to the existing on-site building as part of this CUP application. There are various types of the commercial users in the surrounding area. Approval of the conditional use permit will not adversely impact near, near, nearby users along Colorado Street, nor in, uh, impede the development of the surrounding properties since these properties is all uh, already developed. The massage use is not anticipated to draw a major traffic or create an effect uh, on conflicts with the genset users and no substantial evidence was submitted uh, to indicate that the facility would adversely impact existing facilities. The existing massage establishment has been at the present uh, location since 2015 and no evidence exists that indicate that the use has been an issue. Adequate public and private facilities, the subject site and the surrounding properties is already are developed and the adequate the circulation, the parking and the last landscaping, everything it's there. So all the you know adequate public facilities, everything it's there and it won't be any affected because no changes or expansion of the business is proposed. Okay. So by uh, having all these uh, you know, findings there, we think that it's approval, it's very, you know, it's a normal request to have that. I did review the conditions of the approvals. We don't have any objection uh, or problem with the conditions. We accept the conditions. And as Vista mentioned, when we filed for the CUP and the others, the neighborhood service center uh, uh, code enforcement that they have an open space, open case for that this morning, you know, the, the business has all the state licenses and uh, they are certified. But for the city, even I didn't know, you know, it was not uh, my ex uh, uh, I didn't have knowledge of that, that they have to file uh, with the city to the licensing, which this morning already it has been filed. Okay. Any other question? I will be um, happy to answer it. I just want to make sure that you understand there's condition to you that the business shall fully comply with the provisions of Chapter 5.64 of the Glendale Municipal Code. Uh, yeah. And yes. then also that everyone be certified, like you yes. said, that they need to maintain the certification. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no further questions on this. Um, is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, um, I will close the public hearing on this item and I will approve this project as it is with the conditions that are in the staff report subject to the findings that are included in the staff report and we will issue a, a written decision shortly. Thank you very much. So, thank you. Have a nice day. Um, for the next case, I'd like to call forward um, 
actually, not call forward. Let me just read the description. The second case is located at 2804 Glen Oaks Canyon Drive, variance case number PBAR 1710987. The applicant is Armin Hogtanian. Staff is Milka Toledo. Um, this is a variance request, and I would like to now ask the staff to please provide a presentation. Thank you, Ms. Stotler. As you stated, this is a variance on the proposal is to convert approximately 470 square feet of an existing basement into habitable floor area for purposes of creating a bedroom and a bathroom within an existing two-story single-family house. As proposed, the basement conversion will result in a third story where the maximum allowed is two stories on a lot where the existing building footprint is located on a portion of a lot that's less than 40% average current slope. The overall average current slope of the property is six, approximately 60, I want to say 67 per, 66%. The property is located at 2804 Glen Oaks Canyon Drive, which is located in the R1R restricted residential zone, floor area ratio district 2. The surrounding property consist of R1R, there is also SR because it's across the street from Shoal Canyon, um, which is a park, and also ROS, which is the hillside open space to the south, and then again R1R surrounding the property. The property is 27,450 square feet. It's a rectangular shaped lot with a slight irregularity at the back. The topography is gradually sloping at the street front, and then it leads to an uphill ungraded terrain at the rear with mature hillside vegetation, including oak trees. This ungraded area, again, consists of natural chaparral, and the, there are approximately four mature oak trees. And those are located on or within 20 feet. One of them is very within close proximity to the house at the backyard. And I discussed that further in the findings as well and how that plays a role in this if they were to propose an expansion at the rear. Would you like me to go over the findings briefly as to some justification that why staff is recommending approval of this case? Yes, please. I'm really concerned. Are they actually adding anything to the exterior of the building or is it all um, within the existing footprint of the building? Exactly. As you stated, it's all located within the existing building envelope. And for that reason, the variance is justified on the basis that the strict application of the ordinance with, would result in an unnecessary hardship because the combination of the physical constraints of the sites, including the steep topography, the location of the existing combination, or excuse, excuse me, existing development in combination with established setbacks and location of the oak trees at the rear of the property create physical constraints for which the requested 470 square foot conversion of the existing basement to Floria creates a third story is appropriate. While it does increase the existing number of stories because the building permit shows two stories that was built there again back in 1987 which when, when it was constructed we had different codes that dictated at the time this will not create additional building mass. It's already there, so it will not increase the existing 35-foot overall height of the building. The building envelope will not change. Essentially, it will all stay the same. So no changes there. The, the basement was originally constructed. We looked at some uh, original, which is in the file, plans um, for this that was approved for this property. And it shows... This area there, as a matter of fact, it shows the basement and it shows a laundry and stairs leading to the main house. But this area was always identified, this 470 square foot area is just slab. So it was never um, proposed to, to be improved. And so that's what they're doing today. They're requesting to improve this area, which therefore creates habitable area, which cre therefore creates that additional story which was never recognized originally because it was unoccupied or unimproved at the time under you know a different code at the time um, and so they want to add a th another bedroom which would create a fourth bedroom for the the house and a bathroom so it's a modest request 
to improve an area that's currently there. And once again, it's not going to um, be detrimental to the public welfare because, again, it's the mass, the scale. It's all going to remain the same in the building envelope as well. To have this addition proposed elsewhere to meet the needs of the owner would not be very logical because they, they would it would require additional grading at the back, uh, or and they also have restrictions at the front because they we have setback restrictions. So they're already at the 16-foot uh, setback line, which the maximum allowed is 15. They have, an, they have multiple oak trees. One of them, again, closest to the property is located on the right-hand, I believe it's the right-hand side corner of the rear next to the rear um, uh, retaining wall, excuse me. There's a retaining wall already there which um, next to their backyard. It wouldn't make sense to grade that area and disturb the natural hillside or the obviously the oak tree. They would compromise the roots and the canopy. It's a large mature oak tree which is protected and we want to preserve. So this is the most logical, the way they're proposing, the most logical, reasonable approach to proposing this 470 square foot addition to meet the needs of the owner. And for that, staff is recommending approval with the conditions, recommended conditions and findings outlined in the staff report. There's one comment that I would like to make regarding the oak trees. We didn't have any comments or from other staff regarding this with the exception of our city arborist technician. They did, they did submit a memo and they are requiring the owner to obtain a building, excuse me, indigenous tree permit for unpermitted tree work to that existing oak tree at the rear. Okay. So that's included in the conditions. And of course there will be, if in if it is approved, they will require design review approval. And because it's more than the permitted threshold for exemption, it's more than 200 facing the street, we'll have to look at that more carefully if it would require potentially a different type of design review if it's not an exemption. Yeah, but all the in, all the improvements are proposed though within the existing structure. Correct. So we're not looking at exterior modifications. True. Okay. It's just that technicality. So I just okay. wanted to let the owner be aware. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any further questions. Uh, thank you for your, your report. I'd now like to call forward the applicant, Armin Hogtanian. Hello. Hello. We My please... name is Armin Hoktanian. Okay. Can you please tell me about your project? Uh, sure. Uh, so as, um, as mentioned already, it is a uh, variance to convert a garage into uh, a bedroom. So the reason we're applying for, uh, for, uh, for a variance is and keep the, um, uh, the building envelope as it is because of the uh, site conditions. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the oak trees in the back and uh, severe, like a slope and a terrain, does not allow us to do any addition without altering the landscape and vegetation substantially, which is, I believe, that's the whole idea of the <coughs> of the code to preserve, <coughs> excuse me, to preserve the landscape and natural habitat and uh, and, and the landscape uh, of the original. Uh, site. So, and the building was built uh, in 1987, and it's it used uh, most possible buildable area that's that exists on the site. And at the same time, they built a basement that wasn't part of the square footage at the time. Uh, uh, a basement that is higher than uh, seven feet uh, in height, which actually in these days with Current uh, regulations, it has to be uh, has to be count as a square footage. So technically, we're not adding a square footage. We're just uh, converting the use of it. Uh, we're reclassifying, and by doing that, we're creating a third story. So in 
so technically we're not doing any alteration to the envelope of the house, to the interior of the house. We're just reclassifying that as a three-story building instead of a uh, two-story building, which actually forbidden by code because of the slope uh, uh, is less than 40% uh, percent in that area. So uh, the, the reason this is the most logical is that uh, if they if we're not approved, then we have to, uh, as I mentioned before, substantially uh, uh, substantially uh, alter the landscape. And in addition to that, if we add another square footage to, uh, to the building, which would be like the exterior, not mentioning already interfering with the oak tree, the landscape, and all the other grading um, uh, hardship, we're adding a square footage to the building, which triggers another car garage, which uh, current code says that uh, 3,500 square feet is the limit for two-car garage uh, or two-car parking spots, whatever that would be, uh, the wording is. And uh, if we add additional square footage, then we're going to need a third-car garage, which site does not allow by any means to have a third-car garage, okay. uh, which we will be coming back to you and asking for a variance for allowing us to do two car garage uh, whereas so uh, by saying that that uh, and keeping the envelope everything intact which is right now uh, is probably the most uh, logical thing to do uh, not to disturb the neighborhood in terms of uh, construction in terms of alteration of the landscape in terms of noise, in terms of appearance of the building, which is probably one of the most important concerns of the neighborhood, that uh, you know, keeping everything intact. So in that sense, we can't be any more reasonable than uh, what we're proposing. So okay. that, was be, that would be my reasons for asking for the approval. Have you read the conditions of approval uh, yes. in the staff report? Yes. Do you agree? With the conditions of approval? We do agree with the conditions. Okay. Um, then thank you. I don't have any further questions. And then is there anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak? Okay, I don't have any other cards. Therefore, I'm going to close this public hearing, and I will approve this project subject to the conditions of approval and the findings that are in the staff report, um, and I will be issuing a written uh, decision shortly. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And... Um, we have no further items on this agenda. Therefore, this meeting is now adjourned, and thank you for coming. <laughs>